A few years back on a Gen Con video, I talked about an awesome new game that was going to be coming soon called Aegis. And finally, it has come to Kickstarter, and we got the luck to actually interview the creators right here. That's right. We're here with Breeze and Sarah of Zephyr Workshop. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Doing great. Doing very well. Thank yeah, you for yeah. joining us. And why don't we get started? If you want to just give us uh, an overview of what the game is like, how it works, what makes it awesome, that kind of thing. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, we made a game called Aegis. It's a combining robot strategy game. It's the only combining robot strategy game, as far as I know. Um, you build a team of five robots, and you play against your opponent's team of five robots. There are five different classes of robot in the game. Assault, Evasive, Guard, Intel, and Support. Um, it spells Aegis. The five classes are color-coded. That's where the name comes from. Um, and... Yeah, you have five robots on your team, you combine them together, put an A guy and an S guy together, you can make an AS guy, and then you have a bigger robot, and if your whole team is compatible, you put all five of them together and make Ultron. Um, the whole game is it's like a 25-minute game. It's made to be play like best two out of three. It's basically like a tactical war game for far less time investment and far less cash investment with the same depth of strategy. It's like... Pokemon meets Ultron. That's a pretty That's good one, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Poketron. <laughs> Poketron. <laughs> so that's, the, that's the rebranding. <laughs> it's, it's official. Um, how, how did you guys like get to actually get started designing games? Is this, is this your first game? or a fir First published versus any, any other? It's a, yeah. It's a first a lot of things. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we originally started the game as a senior capstone project in college a few years ago. And it was uh, myself and another awesome dude named Tom. And we put this sort of prototype together. Uh, we brought it to PAX East, made out of paper. The initial game design was me. It kind of came about in like two days. Uh, like while I was brushing my teeth, I came up with the title of the game. But yeah, the whole, like the core systems of the game came out really quickly. And then we started just immediately paper prototyping it and bringing it places. And then we actually uh, we self-published it about a year in, in like 2014. We made a whole bunch of handmade boxes. Well, I didn't, I didn't do anything. Sarah made a whole bunch of handmade boxes, <laughs> which we sold at PAX East and other conventions. Um, so that was pretty cool. But yeah, the, in terms of the initial design of the game, I grew up watching like Transformers, Power Rangers, uh, Star Avengers, which was like a thing I used to rent from Blockbuster back in the day. Mm. That was just like, uh, I guess that was like an Americanized Ghetto Robo. So I watched a lot of that stuff, and, and Voltron, and then uh, I guess about 10 to 20 years later, I ended up making a game about it. <laughs> so... Uh, I really, the whole point is, yeah, I wanted to capture the awesome, the awesome, like, fighting, combining, colorful, Saturday morning cartoon robot thing and put it into, like, a tactical turn-based game. And that was kind of the goal, and I think that we succeeded. The game's really good, and it does give you the feeling of, you know, shooting rocket punches and combining robots together. <laughs> Which is good, and I know. We have people mm -hmm. from all ages who love it. We had kids who were, like, eight who sit down, figure out the game, I swear, in five minutes, and absolutely love it and just want to combine guys right away and then we get guys who are like 50 and old like war game s and they love it because it's fast to play and much more affordable than um war machine or anything <laughs> it's super cool to see that for sure yeah, definitely uh, will is our resident uh Robot I feel like that's fan. not a high bar. That, yeah, <laughs> there's only like four of us. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but I don't know if there's any on our set right now. Well, actually, there's, there's Transformers there. There's all Power Rangers there. I'm sure there's more if we actually actually look. <laughs> yeah, so you're, we're your target demographic <laughs> yep. for, for sure. Um, and I know you guys are now you're working with Greenbrier, right, for this Kickstarter. So how did that uh, cooperation come about? Uh, so the first time we ever really brought the game to a convention to sell, it was at uh, TempleCon in 2014, in like that January, and we showed up with 10 handmade copies, and and in that weekend, uh, the president of Greenbrier, I guess, was just one of the guys who sat down to demo the game, and then it was just like some really nondescript dude, and then he's like, I need to tell him, I'm going to take you out to dinner, and we're going to talk about publishing your game, I'm like, what? <laughs> and so 
that's kind of how that happened. And then we were, uh, through 2014, we were just like in back and forth negotiation and trying to figure out the best way to tackle this. It was all very, very new to us. Um, but yeah, it was, Greenbrier definitely really likes their like pop culture games. They got like uh, zombies and ninjas and robots and I'm sure and like they go into like fantasy and gothic. So we're we're covering we're covering uh, one of those bases here. We're you know, we're doing the uh, the cartoon robot uh, thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's a good yeah, so like, other than that, then yeah, it's been pretty good. But ultimately, we only got published because we decided to just put our game out there and uh, yeah, just kind of throw it up <laughs> in, uh, at a convention. Yeah, you gotta take that first leap, I guess, and it, and it paid yeah. off. <laughs> Definitely pitch your game to everybody. You never know who you'll come across. And you meet a lot of cool people, too, just pitching your game and talking to people about games, which is a really, really cool feeling. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, a, that's a good segue to uh, mm-hmm. what, like, you know, your experiences as indie developers and doing Kickstarter and if anything you would suggest for other people just getting started out, uh, creating their own games, that kind of thing. Uh, like, yeah, make something and then just bring it places. It doesn't really matter if it's done or good. I would just bring it places. You will find some people who will think it's cool, and then more opportunities will appear from there. You can't like work on something for three years and never show it to anybody, and then uh, maybe things will work out. But actually, well, just speaking from our own experiences, getting it out in front of people's faces as early as possible was the best thing that we could have done. And I think that's the biggest and most important thing. Yeah, you get immediate feedback. When we went to PAX 2013, the game was literally on slips of paper with all the core, most of the core gameplay mechanics there. And people got to sit down right away and get a feel for the game and see what worked, what didn't work. Like, there used to be ammo on the robots if you'd like to go into ammo at all, but... Yeah. <laughs> it ended up not working well, so um, to keep things simpler and more streamlined, you know, getting rid of ammo, but, like, that's something we would have never known if we didn't just sit down and play with people. Mm. So it's very important to sit down and get the feedback immediately, because the game's going to be growing and changing as you work on it, and the more people who look at it and give you feedback for what works, what doesn't work, it definitely helps, because you get so close to the project, it's hard to see kind of things that might not be the best idea, Mm -hmm. Um, and it helps to have other people come along and help separate you from that, so you can just make the game better in the end. Yeah, definitely a lot of the ideas that you think are really, really awesome inside your head and that definitely are totally going to work and people are going to love them, (laughs) um, they definitely, you'll you'll find out really quickly if that's true or not, but only if you put it in front of real people. Um, Like uh, when you just first started, it was actually started as a paper prototype for a digital game, so it had, it was based off like Advance Wars. So uh, we had like an ammo system in the game where every attack in the game had like ammo that you had to keep track of. I thought it'd be fine because, you know, it's just like single digit numbers still. But it was just, uh, that was, this was really, really long time. We, had, we, did, we did demo like after the first time we ever showed it to somebody. But it was just an example of, yeah, this is a perfectly intuitive mechanic, but not on tabletop and not for the kind of game that we wanted to make. We wanted to make something that was intuitive with uh, a lot less tracking to it. So that was just sort of an example of um, something that we ditched really early and only because we showed it to people. Right, right. Mm-hmm. That, that sounds good. Well, and you, there's, how many of you are there on the whole team? Uh, right now there's uh, about five of us. Uh, we, we shrink and grow. <laughs> but yeah, the core team is yeah five right now. Uh, it's me, I'm the director, I do a lot of everything. I design the game and I do the art direction. And uh, I did all, um, all the initial illustrations and like oversaw graphic design. And then Sarah is the team coordinator. She organizes us. And then we have two guys who are really good at game balancing and that stuff, which is important to have. And then we have a guy who comes and kind of leads our convention team whenever we bring the game to conventions, which we do a lot. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> like our sales and convention guy. That's kind of run, that kind of runs out our team. And like We've had people come and go. Uh, really cool dudes who... A lot of competitive gaming guys. Um, another dude named Braun, who's like a caster for League of Legends, and he's like some diamond player. He's, he's, he's a magical unicorn. But yeah, he, uh, he helped us out a lot. 
um, to get the game balanced, because our game has a lot of moving parts, and getting people who are very familiar with uh, like team building and high-level strategy and stuff was very necessary to get the game as balanced as we wanted it to be. Got it, got it. And I, I, especially from a team coordinating perspective, you know, I wonder what the, like, what's the dynamic like with all you guys? Is there ever, are there ever heated arguments over, <laughs> over things that people think should or shouldn't go in the game? Or is it really one person kind of does this, one person does this? Well, I see, they got to be in sync to form the robot together. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, it's very exactly. metaphorical. Oh, our team gets together very well. There's never any arguments. Um, <laughs> all right. Ever. We, uh, it's all big, happy family. <laughs> <laughs> we have to find a nice balance of, because um, our two balancing guys, they really want to keep the game cool and intuitive and really smart for, like, your high-level magic players who are in there figuring out the really cool combos and really cool stuff you can do. And then there's, like, me, who I kind of just like playing the game and combining <laughs> robots and just right. I want to just run my robots in there and punch guys. So I'd say the biggest challenge is finding the nice balance of keeping all of our players interested, the kind of people who just want to go for the super attack strategy. I'm going to run in and just shoot you with guns. And then the really high-level players who want to see how can they bend the rules to make really, really cool stuff happen. Um, so I'd say that's the biggest challenge for us. So yeah, it's definitely like we have, I think one of the strengths, one of our strengths is that we have a whole breadth of different types of players on the team. I'm definitely much more of like, I want to do fun and derpy combos, and I want I like to introduce like things that I think are fun in the game. And our two balanced guys are, yeah, like more high level competitive players who are much more math intensive. And then Sarah is like, I want... I want to be instinctual and I want to beat face <laughs> and do the things that, and do the fun stuff. So yeah, we definitely we do, we're definitely trying to appease everyone. And ours is the kind of game that we did, I think we did a really good job at that. Like people who are really competitive will definitely find a lot to enjoy in our game, and then people who are just in it for the robots and the combining. That is the main. That's that's my thing that I wanted to really deliver. You will feel awesome when you play the game and then um and then the game is also simple and intuitive enough where if you just want to play like five assault robots or make the really huge guy and shoot the stuff um that's also something you can do viably in the game I know there's there's two uh sets of the game correct mm -hmm. that are currently are, and each one is a standalone thing and or you can mix and match that kind of thing uh, plans for future expansions along that same line, or any new games beyond that? So the game is, yeah, the game is basically made to be expandable. Um, each box is going to be standalone, so you can play it with two to four players. Uh, that's what our current two boxes are, red box and blue box. Four unique robots in each one. There's no doubles or duplicates between them. The game works completely the same, but the... Pre-built strategies that you get out of both of them are different. Um, and then, yeah, like the overall plan is to, if the Kickstarter does well, then obviously we have a lot more content that's actually already made um, than we can uh, immediately get out there. And it's just a matter of production costs. So definitely looking for the Kickstarter to do really good. Um, yeah, like the overall plan would be, a, yeah, expand the game. We've done a lot of future planning and making sure we're not power creeping or running over ourselves for the future. We didn't use up all of our good ideas in the first set. We just kind of put out the ideas that we felt needed to be in the first sets. Mm. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's... Very there's uh, there's definitely... There, there's by, by its nature, the game has a lot of room to make a lot of new content, new robots, new game modes, and we can keep the game exciting for a good long time um, should people want it. <laughs> and, uh, I think they would, yeah. We've, we've had a lot of really, really excited people all across the country play the game. Yeah, I definitely think we would. We both want to play it, so We're rooting count for us you. in. <laughs> <laughs> You're a backer. I am. I backed it as soon as I found out it went online. Heck yeah. So we're actually doing pretty good right now. We're doing we're doing pretty steady. Uh, 
we just actually hit forty uh, percent. We're only like five or six days in, so we're doing we're doing pretty good. Um, now it's just a matter of yeah, getting the push and getting the word out to even more people. Absolutely, and, uh, definitely. Yeah. Hopefully, we can help with that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, cu I'm just curious, what are some board games, some of your guys' favorite games, other than the ones that you've made, maybe that you're <laughs> playing now, uh, or even ones that influenced uh, Aegis or did not, uh, that you guys like? Sure. Um, so <laughs> I'm a big survival horror fan, so I really, really like uh, Betrayal on... I can't remember. Betrayal on the Yeah, I see that guy, exactly. <laughs> um, so I really like that. I like that there's the... I like playing games with people. I'm not really a competitive person. Um, I am like one-on-one, -on -one, but when it gets kind of to bigger team, I actually don't like it so much. So I like in Betrayal that it starts off as cooperative and then it moves to competitive. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's also great because each game isn't the same. So I think that's really, really cool. And I think you get... What I like most about it is you get a lot for buying the game. Everything, every experience is different. Nothing happens the same way. And I think that's really cool because we made you just be the same thing with all the robots we have. Um, you build a team however you want. You play someone else's team that's completely different, and then you can fight again. You can change up your team a little bit, or because you're moving your robots around on the hex board, positioning's not going to be the same. So you never get the same game as Aegis uh, as well, which I think really has to do um, it being replayable, which I think is super important because people want to be able to play games a ton and really get their money's worth. Um, I. Before we started designing the, before we started designing Aegis a few years ago, um, I actually didn't play a lot of tabletop games, which is interesting. Uh, I've since played a lot more as uh, we've been developing the game. But originally, yeah, I was a big fan of simple tactics games. I played a lot of Fire Emblem, a lot of Advance Wars, Final Fantasy Tactics, and I kind of wanted a game like that, with that kind of simple level of pick it up, put it down strategy. But on tabletop, and I could only find Battletech. <laughs> so uh, we I really wanted to make a game that uh, sort of casual digital gamers would like, kind of like how a lot of video gamers play Magic the Gathering. Um, kind of wanted to go for so I definitely wanted to go for that audience because we there wasn't a lot of uh, sort of best style strategy games that I could find in tabletop at the time. And I wanted to make a game like the games that I liked. Uh, but in terms of like tabletop games, I've, I've actually been playing a lot of level 99 titles. I like everything that they make. I love uh, Pixel sure. Tactics. Mm -hmm. I grabbed a gigantic box of Battlecon at Gen Con. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how uh, D. Brad Talton makes so many good games. <laughs> like. I don't know how you can make games so huge and so often and have them be so good. It's a little daunting. I want to be like him. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so definitely we want, we wanted a... I, I wanted a light to get into, easy to get into, affordable to get into tactics game. And um, that, that, was, that was our main goal with uh, Aegis. Yeah. We wanted to try to fill a niche that wasn't really being filled. I know I love yeah. those Advance Wars and Fire Emblem. I just started playing Fire Emblem, so but yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, oh yeah, Final <laughs> Fantasy <laughs> Tactics, all those. Yeah, that's that's good to have those those influences in mm -hmm. there. Um, any other important burning questions you had for them? Well, not burning, but I think it's a fun one we had we came up with. So we were wondering burning. because uh, <laughs> recently they released the trailer for the new Power Rangers movie. We want to know your guys' opinion on it, <laughs> since after all. You have combining a, robots, yeah, so we go hand in hand. Interest in that. <laughs> it's a good time to be alive. I like that. I like that Voltron finally has a good show. Oh yeah, oh, the yeah. current Voltron show is probably the best Voltron show that's ever actually happened. Mm. Um, and we have we're like living in Power Rangers, and as Zoids is getting rebooted, and Pacific Rim Two is happening. That's right. But yeah, the new Power Rangers trailer. Like, yeah, you guys ever see Chronicle? I have. I have not. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks. It does look a lot like. It, feel, it feels like. It feels like. Uh, yeah, Chronicle Breakfast Club was 
<laughs> definitely, I definitely wasn't expecting the, uh, like, the Regina Spector moody music or whoever plays that trailer song. Um, I'm gonna go see it regardless. I'll probably see it twice. I'm hoping that it's... I'm hoping that it's entertaining. Uh, it can be terrible entertaining, or... I don't think it's gonna be really, really good. <laughs> if, it's, if it's, like, Ghost Rider 2... Or something like that. Like, if it's really, really unintentionally good, then I think they've met their goal. I know the director, I know, like, the screenplay guy or the director or somebody said they're trying to make the, game, make the movie more, make it more serious. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> this is, of all the franchises to not make campy, this is, uh... This summer, the dark truth of Rugrats. Really, I don't think anybody really asked for a deathly serious Power Rangers movie, but we'll see how it goes. Would you guys, you know, hypothetical universe, if you were approached to make a game based on the success of Aegis with a licensed property like Power Rangers or Zoids or something, is that something you would be interested in doing? Would you, would you like, feel yeah. like, yeah? I like, yeah, actually, it's some of the things I'm trying to work on right now is um, our company, Zephyr Workshop, we want to kind of move into, we wanna, I want to make some games based off of cool IPs. Like, I know there are a lot of publishers that just have a lot of IPs that they're sitting on, and they need smaller companies like us to prototype out uh, games like that. Uh, so we're in talks with some other companies right now to try to get rolling on that. Um, I watch a lot of anime, and I know making anime, making board games out of anime is, I guess, the up-and-coming fad. I just got my copy of Space Dandy in the mail the other day. Ah, uh, so um, did we. We haven't t tried it out yet. <laughs> yeah, after like two years. Um, <laughs> so that's definitely something we're going to try doing. I would love to make a Power Ranger game. I would love to make yep. an actual Voltron game. I'd love to make a Transformers game. Yeah, I, um, I constantly complain about mine not being made. You're getting your Buffy game, finally, <laughs> from Upper Deck. Uh, the other, oh, that's true. The two yeah. Buffy games. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we always want a Transformers game, <laughs> yeah. so... We're going to rely on you to, to make that happen. Yeah, exactly. hey, You're our hey. only hope. <laughs> uh, anything else about Aegis or anything else that you want people to know before we take off? Yeah. Uh, after <laughs> game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're, like I said, we're doing, we're doing pretty good, and we're definitely expecting to meet the goal. Um, we would like to hit the stretch goals, and then everyone will be really happy because then they'll get even more robots and cooler components and a whole lot of other stuff. Uh, Game's 40 bucks, pretty affordable. It'll make you feel like a super robot hero. Um, it's a game that I definitely made. I definitely, I definitely made the game for uh, yeah, guys like me who just wanted to play a super robot game. Um, and I think anyone who likes uh, robot cartoons or even like tactics games will really, really like the game a lot. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's yeah, that. Yeah, um, the Kickstarter is up till the 28th. Yeah, the 28th. So make sure to back. 27th, 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 27th. So make sure, if you want giant robots, I mean, back before then. But you're doing really well, and we're excited to keep the hype and keep it going. Oh, and the other, the other cool thing is the game is basically done. So if the Kickstarter, or when the Kickstarter succeeds, uh, we pretty much go into production like a month or two afterwards, and then the game gets printed. You're not going to be waiting like four years for it to come out, so that's legit. Nice. Uh, nice. So yeah, we're we're looking to have the game sellable by next Gen Con, uh, with the kick, when the Kickstarter ends, we're going straight into finishing it up and um, throwing it to China. <laughs> it doesn't get much better than that. That's mm -hmm. that's that's pretty good. Well, we're looking forward to attending that Gen Con and yep and. Checking yep. out the copies yeah. ourselves. Yeah, and receive my own copies. <laughs> receive the yeah. actual Kickstarter copies. Uh, super excited. We're going to have a link in the description below to the Kickstarter itself so people watching can back this mm -hmm. uh, and help you guys out. The game is Aegis and it looks awesome. Uh, and thank you guys for joining us. It's, it's been fun and best of luck to you on that project <laughs> and anything else you guys do in the future. <laughs> but, uh, thank you guys a lot. Yeah, thank you for having us. No, our pleasure. Yep. <laughs> but for now, I'm Will Keeler. I'm Jonathan Estes, and you've been watching Roll for Crit. <laughs> and then we stop. <laughs>